So, uh, so, so I figure we just have a, a casual, fun conversation, guys, and kick this off. Sound good? Yeah, yeah. Sounds good to me. Just before we get started, Willie, just give you a little background. Marshall and I, we did a, a conversation last week. We had a lot of fun on it. We talked about, uh, you know, obviously this is for drug free world, but we talked about one of the reasons why, you know, certain people choose drugs and certain people don't. And we kind of boiled it down to the fact that when you have a purpose um, and you're really focused on that purpose and you're passionate about it, um, you tend to make different decisions. So uh, well, I have a history with drugs. I would deed when I was 21. Marshall, you know, is the opposite. He knew what he wanted to do at six years old. And we had this cool discussion last week. So uh, I think it'd be fun to have you on and just hear from your perspective and just get rocking and rolling. Yeah. That sounds good. Perspectives always are, are great. Cool. All right. I'll kick it off. So it starts recording now and then, uh, and then we'll just kind of roll into it. All okay. right, guys. Well, welcome back to another week. Um, we've got some cool uh, conversations coming your way right now. I've got Willie Burton here and we've got Marshall Falk again. And uh, Marshall and I wanted to uh, bring somebody on this week who's, you know, got a really cool background. Um, we like to bring on role models and people that have, you know, had uh, a high level of success in their life, but also have faced some challenges. Willie, I actually saw you speak on a video, um, you know, about uh, two months ago or something. And um, I remember you up on stage and I remember you and I remember you had a winning scoring record in one of your games. So that's. That's how when Jenny told me about you, I was like, oh, this is going to be fun to have a conversation with you. So thanks for being there. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So let, let's kick it off and, you know, tell us a little bit about your history. I know that you, you know, played in the NBA and you broke a lot of different records there and had a had a long career. And, you know, obviously we're here to talk today about the drug free world from one perspective, which is, um, you know, why do people turn to drugs? And we want to give people really the truth about drugs to just educate them so they can make informed decisions. You know, I've got a history with it. Um, I made some decisions to go a different path versus following my purpose. You know, what was it like for you, um, you know, having a purpose, I'm sure at a young age with basketball? Um, and, you know, what was your journey like with people that you're around and you saw getting caught up in drugs and maybe your personal experiences with it? Well, my personal experiences with drugs is really before I had a cognitive, a cognitive ability really to make an educated decision, uh, peer pressure when I was younger wanting to be a part of the varsity basketball team, wanting to be a part of the guys that were older and make it a decision, not knowing that there was a gene that lies inside of me that has an addictive trait. Thinking that I can pick up a beer and sip it, thinking that I could uh, take a puff of marijuana and I'd be okay. Not realizing that addiction ran rampant in my family as far as those who, who, who put it in their bodies or touched it. I had no information and no education as to that right now. And this is one of the reasons I think that drug-free world is really important. When we were talking last week, I had a similar experience with it. I didn't have the information. I was around friends and, you know, people who were doing it. And I just thought, oh, you know, I'll do a little bit. It feels good. Didn't notice the effects of it initially. It was like, oh, this is totally fine. And, you know, pretty sure it creeps up on you. And you're like, well, what happened to my life? So for, for you, I mean, what was it like? playing athletics and then you know having that experience with it well having the experience where they made it more difficult um I, I can tell you this much i would have played a lot better had i not been battling drinking and drugs you know uh especially alcohol i mean alcohol was it was just something that ran through my family and it was just something so quick for me to pick up and make an excuse to drink to do with a lot of games I had 20 and 25 points. I was literally hung over in the basketball court wow. in the NBA. Yeah. You know? Man. <laughs> you, know, you, you know what's, 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 uh, what you, what's something that you said, man, and that a lot of people don't even understand is that um, the same way the athletic gene is in you, uh, the same way uh, your good looks, <laughs> you know, the same way whether – you're obese or not, all of those things, the same way, you know, your propensity to do drugs and how you handle it, it's, it's inside of you. Like you, you're, 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 you're born with that, that, that disposition of, of how you, how you deal with things. And, and you don't, you don't even know, you, you don't even know if, if, um, and, and, and think about it. If, if you grow up with your parents, with your birth parents, you might, you might have an idea, you might see it, and be able to identify and know something's wrong, something's wrong. But think about the kids that get adopted 
or go through the foster system or something like that, they have no idea. They don't even know mm-hmm. what's wrong with them. They don't even know that's an issue. And, and, and they take it all personal. They don't even know, you know, it's, hey, I inherited this. What, what do I do? Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Completely. W- Willie, when, when did you, you know, we talked about this last week with Marshall New at a young age with his purpose. When, when did you know, you know, what your purpose was? Was it young? Were you clear from a young age on that? No. My, my purpose was not, from a young age, my purpose was cloudy. It was just about, really, uh, I, was, I, I was raised in a good family. Uh, yeah. I was, you know, I went to Catholic school. I mean, I uh-huh. had cars in high school, so it wasn't like I grew up, you know, um, in, in a really uh, financial stressful situation. Um, I was building my character along the way, uh, deciding where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do, and what I wanted to be. As a kid, I played baseball, basketball, and football. And in high school, I dropped a sport each year based on how much fun I had playing each. Uh, I also ran track, too. So um, I was looking for my purpose, searching. And And maybe searching for my – I'm sorry, go ahead. When did you know the NBA was it for you? Uh, a scout came up, a scout visited the University of Minnesota my junior year, but the NBA was, and a lot of people probably find this weird. I was raised around a family. I was raised in education that the NBA wasn't the conversation. The conversation was getting your grades, going to school, getting a degree. If the NBA is going to happen, it'll happen. Now my junior year, and that was the attitude I took literally, I enjoyed the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. And then the scout came to the game. Um, and someone mentioned to me that a scout was at the game looking at me. That was my first time I went, oh, okay. You know, so the NBA is interested. Uh, interesting, huh? So mm-hmm. do you, what do you think, um, you know, when you got into something like that, was it your passion, right? Were you, were you just loving basketball? I did love to play basketball. I did. But at the same time, I like life also. When you become a professional athlete, you have time to do little or nothing other than that professional sport. You know, Marshall can, can um, I'm pretty sure he can, you go to all these cities and you don't have the strength really to travel around and do a lot of things. <laughs> you either icing, getting therapy, or <laughs> you're not going around sightseeing or touring. What do you say about that, Marshall? <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, don't, you don't really get a chance to enjoy it. <laughs> You, 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 you might get some dinner. You might see a friend in the lobby. Other than that, that's it. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you know, I think sometimes, I mean, I, I, you know, the fact that I OD'd, I still had, you know, my profession at the time, which was work. So I had a distraction to, you know, where it wasn't so bad where I was drinking and drugging all the time. So I feel like sometimes when you have, you know, at least some purpose, you know, you're focused on the future a little bit and you have something to get up for and the discipline to do it. Um, But sometimes, you know, people have no purpose and they get totally lost in it. Was it sporadic for you more so, Willie, where like you did it once in a while or was it like an all the time thing? It was a a combination. Could be sometimes, all the time, could be. But I made sure when it was time to play, I was there to play. I mean, I, one of the things that I, 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 re, I really would not, never do, and, and Marshall, again, can attest to this, your teammates are like your family. They depend on you, mm-hmm. you know? They're dependent on you. So that dependence, their dependence, if, if you want to say anything, something for me, the foundation to hold on to was my teammates' dependence on me, you know, and, and not letting them down. Yeah. What, what, what are your thoughts, Marshall? Can you hear him? I think you broke up. Well, when, when you when you look back on 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 what you were kind of putting your body through, do you marvel over the fact that you were able to do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every day, I was like, "Wow, seriously!" You know, um, to accomplish these feats um, in in the state that I was in, not one hundred percent physically or cognitively. Um, my instincts to play the sport, um, you know, it's just a, I do marvel over, I go over why, how was I able to, to make the moves I did? These are best in the world. And I'm literally, you know, I'm 
probably smelling like a a, a bar, and they know they got me, but they wow. still don't have it. You know, um, God given talents, <laughs> uh, physical gifts, um, but then I had a heck of a work ethic too. I I trained and I would train until I literally passed out. Uh, I would. Um, and knowing in the back of my mind that I had people depending on me, it was just a lot of surrounding circumstances where I don't care how I felt. I guess it's like kind of like having an injury, you know, yeah. having an injury and figuring a way around it. Mm -hmm. where, where did the work ethic come from? Was it something you always had or you developed it over time? Oh, no, something I always had. My coaches required that of me from day one. Um, I lost four games in high school. Um, I had six of my teammates my senior year in college playing the NCAA tournament. Um, wow. Back to back state champion, champions. Um, so I was always in a very competitive environment from day one. So maybe it's cognitive uh, brain gearing. I was always in a very high, high competitive environment. And I learned to play with others that were just as good as I am uh, and be able to be productive in that environment. At, at early, I was, it was just a lot of blessings along the way that may have contributed to that. You know, um, as I think back, I had six teammates playing the NBA in college. Um, and coaches that I had were because I was Willie Burton, they didn't care. You know, it was about, this is what we're doing. And I was always, <laughs> I was always made to run with the guards, <laughs> even in high school, man, do you know how hard that is? <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> think about it. You got to rush. So that work ethic was there and it, it was, it was my foundation and maybe that helped along the way yeah. in, in addition to all the other, other components. But Marshall knows when you got, you got, that's like, like, like having a lineman run with the backs almost. You know what I mean, Marshall? Yeah. <laughs> you, put, you put a big with the little guys. You put a big with the little guys, man. That's, that's asking a lot. Yeah. Ooh, so here's, here's something else you may not know, Marshall. You had a lineman that blocked for you pretty good by the name of Orlando Pace. All right? Yeah, OP. That's my wife's cousin. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I, I would, yeah, I would see him out and, and we would, you know, when they had events and things like that, especially with his agent. And I've got a son. He looks... My sons, the rest of my family, we're built like this. And, and again, I warn my kids, keep stick, sticking with drugs and, and keeping drug free. Where I warn my kids, I give my kids the warning I didn't receive. Um, I have a son that's built just like Orlando and those guys. My youngest son, he's about, he's a freshman. He's five, five nine, two twenty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's doing pretty good Boy, in Texas man. football. <laughs> That's a big boy. That's a big boy. That's a big boy. Yeah. Man. That's nice. Five nine, two, two. That's a big boy. My God. So he takes after he takes after Orlando, those guys. Everyone else is built like me. That's impressive, man. Will, Willie, what was, um, you know, I, I know you scored around 60 some odd points in a game. And so what was the, the highlight of that? Um, comparatively to, to, to the high of drugs? Was it a completely different feeling and experience? Did it last for a long time? Like, what was it like? I'm going to be honest with you. Those things were great, but my mind was still on, okay, man, how can I stop drinking? How can I stop doing drugs? That, that's what my mind was. My mind, and I guess that's what the foundation that my coaches and my environment put in me. Yeah, that's great, but I've got something that I need to really kind of focus on and deal with. Uh, that responsibility in the back of my mind to know that, yeah, I tripped into this thing, but eventually I want to, I want out of here, you know? Yep. Yep. So that was the real battle. My battle, you know, what is, what is my, that like? I, and, and I'm just, well, my battle was not with the players on the basketball court. That was, I don't want to say easy, but it wasn't that difficult uh, to me. My difficult battle was this, 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 drugs and alcohol, the fight of not putting it in my body. When something physically and, and mentally has you, when you open your eyes, 
it's a thought of, okay, how can I get around all of the barriers in my way to at least get a beer or two? Literally, from the time I opened my eyes. It wasn't, oh, I got to guard Michael Jordan tonight. Oh, I got to guard Reggie Miller tonight. That wasn't it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what's, what, what's, that, what's that like when, when you're trying to quit? Now, now you, have, you, have this, you have this willpower, you have this work ethic, and you can do whatever you want, but when it comes to this thing, you can't. Like, what? 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 I, I don't. And I'm telling you because I really don't understand it. Because I know, in the realm of sport, you do what you want to do whenever you want with your body, your mind. You understand how your mind control. If you decide, you know what? I want to drop ten pounds. I want to get stronger here. I want to become better with my right hand. I want to come, become better with my left. I want to become better doing this move. I want to come. You just do it. That's what you work at. You put the, and I'm listening to you say, I wanted to do this, but I could not. What was that like having to accept that you couldn't do it when you are a top notch athlete? Okay. So let's, let's look at it like this. And that's a great question. That's one of the best questions I had from one of, from, and, and, and this right here will be, hopefully it'll help you understand, get it and understand, not just you, but others also. Imagine you're a remote control car, right? You typically have controls over what you want to do. From your perspective, you're the controller, correct? Yeah. Okay. Now imagine taking that control and passing it to someone else. Hmm. I want to go left, but <laughs> it's literally controlling me from my insides. And that's the fight. I'm conscious to know that I am this car, that I have a choice. However, something literally and figuratively has made choices and decisions for me before I could cognitively do so myself. And that's, that's exactly it. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, I felt, I felt like a, Go ahead. Sorry, I was saying I, I felt like, uh, you know, the same discipline. It I was about to me. say. Go ahead, Marshall. Go ahead, Ted. Well, I, I was saying the, a little bit of a delay. Go ahead, Ted. Yeah, the, 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 for me, the the same discipline it took to succeed at something, it felt like it was the same discipline to try and stay off it. And you know, there were times where I went the, the longest run I went, which was the first time ever in my life, was like eleven months without having a sip or having any drugs or anything. And uh, and it was like you know socially, it's like secluded, um, you know, sitting in my house. And like the way I socially related to the world, you know, I was now a hermit. I was like, I have no social life now. So the trade off is like, what do you do? And, and I felt like the same discipline to stay away from the, the drugs and the alcohol um, was like, you know, is almost like forcing it away, like trying to keep it away, keep it away, keep it away, keep it away. And then I remember on New, it was New Year's Eve, you know, buddy's like, hey, let's go out. And all it took was one night of drinking again. And then it was, you know, the next night and then it was the next weekend and then it was drugs and drugs and drugs. And I realized that, you know, pretty soon it creeps up and you lose all control. You're like, what the hell just happened, man? You know, that, that was the experience. For me. I went, I'm sure you've had some similar stuff like that, Ward. Yeah, without a doubt. You just explained it. But Marshall had a question. I wanted to listen to what, what, what Marshall had to say. He, wanted to come, he had a comment. Oh, I was just, uh, I was about, I was, I was saying that, when, when, when you figure that out, I guess where you go from there is you then understand, you have to come to an understanding that this thing is bigger than you and you no exactly. longer can do it alone and you need help to kind now try, of try, figure this out. Yeah, exactly. Now try to be that being Marshall Falk. Right, ego. Exactly. I've done yeah. everything. Yeah. I've been. Right. That's right. That's the battle. I figured. I figured out everything. <laughs> I've, every problem, I've dominated every opponent. And you mean to tell me this? It's hard to give in because you you're literally giving in. 
Jesus. You're admitting you're powerless. Yes. No. I, I can't it. do it. I get it. And, and, yeah. and, and if you and if you if you wait too long, I mean, you could lose everything, and and you can come, you can you can almost cross the line to where you do damage to yourself, to where mentally and physically, um, man, you know, you you had, you had a very bad place. Yeah. Will, Willie, what's what's your uh, what's your purpose now after you know you got out of the league and. What do, you, what do you feel like you found a passion for now? Well, I found a passion for giving back uh, and spreading the message to students and youth at the same age I am. Right now, I'm working in K-12 through athletics in Detroit. I work with youth with the NBA, the Players Association, Legends of Basketball. I've done, done stuff with Play 60 in the NFL, uh, stuff with the NHL, uh, you name it, um, to give back. Um, one of the things is, you know, and and – that powerlessness. And I'm trying to, as Marshall said, it's called powerlessness, admitting I'm powerless, you know, realizing that I crossed the magical line that I can never go back to being, it's like a pickle and a cucumber, you know, uh, once you're a pickle, I can never go be a, become a cucumber, uh, yeah. and trying to pass that message on to youth. You don't want, you want to finish growing into a cucumber. You don't want to get yourself, put yourself in a position to where you're spending a lot of your time battling yourself, you know, Yep, I do. Yeah, what's it, um, you know, for, for me personally, I mean, I saw you speak on stage, you're a great speaker. And I'm sure you do a lot of that now. I, you know, later on in my life, I, you know, built up a speaking business. And I also do a play on my life story that has to do with, you know, my overdose and searching for my purpose. And I, I feel like when I finally got clean of it, um, I, I felt like I, the things I wanted to say, I felt like I wanted to say something to the world and give back. And I felt like I couldn't do that when I was drinking. I felt like I was too split people and I would have no credibility, especially in my own mind. You know, what was it like for you when you got clean of it? Did you feel also you had something to say? You had something that you wanted to express to the world that maybe you didn't before? I feel like at the end that my true gift was not basketball. Yeah. I felt like yeah. I was, I was, supposed to go through what I went through and my responsibility and my purpose now is to go back and spread the message. Yep. That's great. That's what That's I feel great. like my purpose is to spread the message, spread the message. Now talk with state senators, talk with, uh, uh, um, state education leaders, which I do right now. And they can't argue because I've studied it. I've been through it. And educationally, I, completely understand it and I can give it to them from a perspective that they never thought of mm. and they go wow never thought about it that way yeah so right now someone's pulled the hand grenade and they're holding it it's gonna go off what are we gonna do about it yeah you know they yeah. pulled the pin they're just holding it <laughs> great that's amazing how, how about for you Marshall like you you did so much where you know you were playing the game I don't know how vocal you were when you were playing in terms of you know, speaking to whoever and sending a message while you were in the game, you're probably super focused playing the game. But what was it like, you know, with you having something to say, you know, after you played and while and, and also while you played? You there, Marshall? Unless, you know, I, I stayed in my lane. I, I, I mind my business. <laughs> I, uh, unless younger guys came to me and, uh, and, and asked questions, if they didn't ask questions or if I didn't see them going down the road that was not conducive to, to them maybe becoming the best uh, professional that they could, you know, because I, I also believe that there's a, within all of this, you know, making mistakes is a part of the learning process, you know, uh, so you got to learn in a sense. I just didn't want them to make the big mistakes. I didn't want them to make the mistakes that you can't bounce back from. Yeah. So uh, I wanted them to have the experience but I wanted to make sure that they didn't wreck their careers 
uh, and I gave them advice. But I just, I, I stayed in my lane, man. It's, the, that locker room can be a, a very delicate place. And um, a lot of the guys that, uh, that were heavy into religion, that maybe didn't drink or didn't do certain things, uh, they never crossed the line because you knew the guys, you knew the guys who, who dabbled and did stuff and you knew the guys who were, who were into the word. And then you knew like the, the guys who were just, just hardcore. And do nothing. So you knew who the guys were and everybody kind of stayed in their own lane. And nobody, you know, that locker room is, is like, it's it, like you, when you walk in there, there's no judgment. You leave people in the lanes, you, you, you let everybody be. And we all, we all get to be team. But if anybody ever, if anybody ever uh, got in the way of team goals, that's when you check them. Or if they street life or anything that they did outside of, outside of the team, outside of the locker room, interfere with the team, that's when you intervene. But as long as, let's say, if, if, if Willie would have been on our team and let's say he had a drink and he came and balled and put up 24 and 10, we ain't got nothing to say to him. We ain't got nothing to say to him. You, you can't say nothing to a man if he's doing his job. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Did you ever get heat, Willie, from players when you were playing or did people just kind of stay away from you? The sad thing about it is, is like Marshall said, and I just realized something. And he, what he said just made total sense. You get 25 and 12, nobody's going to say anything. You know, I was – and then you, you take me and you say, okay, Willie, well, we're going to bring you off the bench and see how you do. Okay, I'm leading the NBA in points per minute off the bench. You know, so it's like – and that really is not a good thing, though, in the end. You know, it's yeah. still not a good thing. You know, I, I would rather someone wrap me around and say something to me or pull me aside or keep my coattail or call me on the phone. I, I needed that more. So maybe I shouldn't have – I couldn't help it, though. I mean, it was – I'm just thinking about that. He brought up a, yeah. a wonderful point, a perspective I never thought about. You, you, know, you know what that is. It's um, you, you had the ability to defeat whatever it was that they put in front of you. It was like, hey, we need you to be a starter. I'm going to get my numbers. We need you to come off the bench. I'm going to get my numbers. It, it didn't matter. Hung over – like you were going to ball regardless. You found a way to funger. You know, it doesn't really interrupt your life. It's like that's the problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. And everybody, you know, now I. I'm still leading the team at halftime. Even though I'm coming off the bench, I'm leading the team and scoring at halftime. Okay. So, yeah. I, I, I think that – yeah, wow. Great perspective, man. I can add that to my, to my shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, so, so Marshall, in terms of you, you know, playing at such a high level, like who, who challenged you out there? Was it you challenging yourself with your own standards? Yeah. Or was it your coaches? It was you, huh? Yeah. Uh, it was always me. Yeah. I, um, I was my biggest critic. Uh, uh, you know, I self-scouted myself. Uh, on you based on what you did I know that I, I was doing it so if I know the thought process while I'm doing it and then something else happened I get to judge myself and be harder and and and, and I get to be better man I you know I I know what I put into it and and I know what I'm getting out of it. And so I want to make sure I, I want to maximize every opportunity, every opportunity. Hey, Marshall, let me ask you a question. You just brought up another point that made me help you think about what it's like to be, uh, you know, controlled by something else. 
You know that second mind that you had, that second thought process, when you stop and you thought, hey, I need to get better. Hey, I need to lift weights. Hey, I need to work. Hey, I need to work out. I'm not doing enough. That critic that was on you, that's inside of you. Are you there, Marshall? Yeah, I got you. I got you. That critic. What if that critic was the one suggesting every day? And and this is this is this is a great conversation. I love it. What mm -hmm. if that critic inside of you was the one suggesting to go left? That said with the same influence and power. That voice. Hey, let's go get a beer. Hey, let's go over here. Oh man. They 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 they're looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one there, man. <laughs> That's exactly what it was like. <laughs> I think Martin. Martin. I couldn't hear him. He might be breaking up, yeah. You there, Marshall? Is he here? I'm having issues. I'm sorry. I couldn't understand him. Me neither. Yep, I'm back. They're working on the okay, internet good. in my neighborhood. Sorry about that. No problem. Okay. So what was your, what was your response? We didn't. They picked a Saturday to come work on the internet. Yeah. What's your response to that about that 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 person that if your championship you on the inside was that guy's suggestion Man, to go left? I, I, listen, dude, that would be a tough one because that that dude is dominant. That's a very dominant figure. Like he wins all the time, and mm -hmm. whew, I got the chills thinking about it. I'm not lying to you. <laughs> Cause I never, cause, 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 cause he's never asked me to do anything bad. <laughs> he's, he's never, he's never been a part of, he's never been a part of anything. <laughs> so I'm like, I got the chills thinking about it. <sighs> wow. What, what, what would you, uh, what would you, thanks Marshall, what would you say, Willie, to somebody who's kind of in the thick of it right now, you know, who might be struggling with some type of drug addiction or even alcohol? What, did, what advice do you have them if they're in the thick of it? You can't win. You, you, you can't win and you won't win on your own. Yeah. Um, trying to battle this on your own is something that's going to take time. It's like playing chess. You're going to keep winning. You're going to have small wins, but end up having big losses in the process. Uh, as you could, uh, you, you could validate what I'm saying. When you totally. try to take this on one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to have a few wins. It's going to make it seem like you're gaining some ground, but in the end, you're really going backwards. Um, well, yeah. It's, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm, I'm, well, yeah, go ahead. It's so interesting what you're saying because it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, I didn't know until I kind of studied and learned up on it that, um, you know, I thought you go sweat it out and you're good, you know, and uh, ready for the next round. And I, I actually learned that it stays in your fat cells, you know? So the, the drugs and the alcohol can stay in your fat cells. And then they're constantly like impinging on your mind. And so you're walking around like, why can't I kick this thing? I thought I'd just sweat this out. And now I feel like, crap, you know, I feel like I need another drink. And it's like, it's in the body. It stays in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it's constantly in there. It takes a total of 18 months for you to be 100% free of clear of your fat cells. Total of 18 months and, to be 100%. How, how, how did you do it? Because I did a process that took about 40 days to clear it out, 40 days straight. You know, I went back to, I went back to sports. Yep. I went, I went back to athletics. I, mean, I, I had to go back and go, okay, I don't know. I need someone to help me. Mm -hmm. And then I, I went around those who knew about this, and I followed the directions of what they said. Now, again, I kept trying to only follow so much directives for a period of time. I'll do this. I'll do that. I won't do that. I won't do this. 
Okay, once I made up my mind to 100% follow directives of everything that they had said, because I had tried every way known, you know, to get to, to, to beat this thing. And um, everything else I was successful at except fighting this thing. I mean, yeah. I could give my... I can give Michael Jordan 20. I can get, I'm going to score on anybody. I don't care who you put on me. You can put, you know. But I could not score on this thing. Yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. Jesus. wow. Yeah. What a perspective, man. Jeez. But, but mentally, as you understand, I had yeah. to go, okay, this is something that I'm not familiar with. I need to go understand the rules associated with this in its own environment. Learn them, be a, be a willing student the way I was when I first picked up a basketball or football or baseball. Be willing to listen and try new ideas, exercises, and use this completely separate from anything that I have experienced in my life. Yeah, that's amazing, man. It's amazing. So what's so what's next for you? You continue on with the mission of you know serving people and helping people around the world. You're you're clearly involved with a lot. Um, what, what's next for you? What are you excited about? Well, I'm about to release XLU, a curriculum for student athletes that I created. Again, Marshall, as I said before, there's not enough information for our populations out there. Some of the pitfalls is waiting on us. No, and I redesigned not at all. something not at to. All put in the hands of athletes that'll put us in the classroom for the first time. And guess where the money comes from? The federal government. Amazing. So we don't, have to fund, we don't have to fundraise for the finances or anything. Each school has a Title I, Title II, and Title IX. And I just signed a contract with Star Commonwealth to help me um, deliver this content across the United States with the NBA, the NFL, the NHL. And my, my first goal is to do with former players because right now we're working with youth we have the time and we have communities that we've played in and participated as well as communities that we um uh live in and we're from that we can make maximal impact uh, with our population wow and what's what's title one title two title nine title one is funding that comes from the government that that uh for programs uh that are not in the school curriculum uh -huh. uh, title two is for professional development of those individuals who work in the school district to run the program, meaning train the teachers or the coordinators in that school to run the program within a school. So that, that way it gets twofold because some schools are funny about individuals coming in. But what's good about us is that we have the relationships to go into schools. Uh, title four is for, um, ooh, man, I'm losing my thought process here. Title four is... Title, title, well, there's Title Four also. That comes from the state. Each okay. state has Title IV uh, funding where they can take and, and, and use it for auxiliary programs that work and meet the guidelines of the state. Title IX is for females, making wow. sure that the female population also has access to this information. As you know, female sports is, is also expanding. It's actually one of the fastest growing sports right now uh, in the country. So, um, the females are coming. They're coming and they're coming hard and they're doing some really, really successful things across sports. And we want to make sure that they have the same tools and, you know, are not uh, dis in, uh, excluded from receiving the same type of information. That's awesome. And, and I missed Title I. What was that again? Title I is for programs that are outside the normal curriculum of the school. So let's say typically you have a foundational curriculum, uh, math, science, English. Yeah. Those are foundational. Um, however, there are other programs that you may want to add to that to, to improve that. So for instance, social studies, this curriculum can take the place of an actual social studies class. We have a, so it's evidence-based program that's measured by the University of Minnesota. Once it's measured by a college, that means you, you've kind of arrived. That's awesome. That's really cool. Congratulations on doing that. Yeah, well, thank nice. you. Fi final question for both of you, and then we'll wrap it up. So for you, Willie, um, you know, what was the relationship like with your, your parents all along and, um, and then how has it changed today? Well, my parents, my parents were the one who dodged the bullet. I mean, for the most part, I mean, they dodged the bullet that I caught, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they knew there were problems in the background. They said they wish they would have told me, told me more. Oh yeah. Yeah. They wish they would have told me more, which I did with my kids. And um, the relationships are, are great. 
right now. Um, everyone's at ease, you know. Um, yeah. My kids, I sit there and I laugh at them and I talk with them. But the warning I gave them, they had heed to. Yeah. Because you know, I gave it to them straight. And you know? how many kids do you have? I have a total of six kids. Oh, I have three adults, three kids. <laughs> so <laughs> let me make that clear. I have three adults. <laughs> they still, they still three kids. <laughs> they still kids. <laughs> how, how about for you, Marshall? What was it like for you, like, you know, your relationship with your family and what's it like now? Uh, my, my relationship was always good with my parents. Um, uh, unfortunately, but fortunately, I grew up uh, in the community where drugs was, it was just a part of, I mean, we got, we got drug education in the neighborhood. So I, I knew I was well aware of, of what, what drugs could do. Um, I watched alcohol. Uh, my father was a, was a, you know, he drank alcohol rampantly. So I, I was familiar with that. And, um, <laughs> As far as as far as with my kids, um, I'm raw with them. You know, I I I, I let them know. Um, they know my stance on drugs. I, I there's there's not. It's it's not like I say no. I it, it's not even tolerated. It's not accepted. There's no room for it in my life. You know, mm -hmm. I just I'm 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 real cut and dry with it, and. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's real hard to take that stance, understanding that I have, you know, young kids growing up in, in California of all places. And, uh, you know, having two older sons and, and, and I'll be honest, you know, and they, they, they've come to me and say, hey dad, you know, I've tried. I just want you to know I've tried. I said, I, I hear you. Thanks for being honest with me. And then we, we've sat down and I just, I, I, I explained it to him. I said, listen, you know, I've, I can't tell you I know what you're going through because I've never experimented. I said, but from what I know, um, the experiment, it continues. You know, you continue to experiment different things because as, as I know, courage is what you build. It's like, well, I tried that. Try this and it was okay. I said, so just please be careful and be mindful. And that's that's it, man. That's how that's what I say. That that's the that's the conversation with my kids. That's awesome. Any any uh <laughs> final questions or comments for each other guys before we uh sign off? Uh, I just want to say thanks. Um for oh, I just both I just guys. say Go ahead. Well, go ahead, Marsha. No, no, you you first. Okay. No, go ahead, Marshall. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's not a problem. Go ahead. No, you, you, you're the guest. Ted and I, we do this. We just, <laughs> you're the guest. Well, I want to I wanna say that conversating about this, you could never get enough information. Um, I've grown today by talking with you two and realize things. And that's the goal. It's, it's a journey. It's the journey of life, journey of understanding. Um, just like the journey of exploration that we're born with. Um, sometimes we explore on a football field. Sometimes we explore on a tennis court. Sometimes we explore in a chemistry lab. You know, um, it's a part of our DNA. But talking to you two today helped me find two additional tools to be able to explain um, something that's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. what what does it feel like on the inside you know mm -hmm. that's the hard part to connect with now nah, nothing controls me i'm not you can't get it but marshall gave me something i'm gonna name you too marshall fall gave me <laughs> 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 gave me a piece of information that said he had that individual on him that would not let him do that and then i'm gonna spin it back around and Reverse that individual. <laughs> so I wanted to thank both of you guys for this conversation today. Um, it's just, uh, and this is my real purpose. My real purpose is to challenge the status quo 
to go in and change rules and regulations to protect these kids from the experimentation stage because, you know, the experimentation stage is where <laughs> all of a sudden now, it's just like cars to drive themselves. My hands are off the wheels. Yeah. They have yep. no idea. So anyway, thank you. Uh, our pleasure. Thank you. Marshall, yeah. you want to, you want to, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be brief because what I, what I have to say is, uh, it's, it's, it's very short. Um, William, you'll, you'll understand this in today's world, uh, drugs are cool. And, uh, and I want to make them uncool again. I want yeah. people to be educated as to why and have the information as to why not they should, they, they shouldn't try, try them because it's, we, we are, um, it's cool and it's cool. Yeah. 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 That's great, Marshall. And, and also Willie, um, I, I want to say one final thing before we wrap up. So, um, you know, if you, if anybody wants to get involved, who's watching, we, uh, you know, we've, we put together some links down below. And one of the things that's cool about drug free world is, uh, you know, about three weeks ago, Marshall and I did an event and we raised about, you know, $20,000 with uh, just a whole group of people. And uh, I think the most important thing about, you know, before we even raise the money, which is one of the missions that I have for this is getting people involved in the conversation. I think, you know, what was so powerful about our experience with that group of people was when you start the conversation, people realize that there's hope. And we, you know, people weren't in the conversation before. And I think there's a lot of people who are overwhelmed, whether it's by big institutions out there that are pushing drugs, you know, overwhelmed by, you know, the fact that, you know, marijuana is being pushed in so many different states now. And a lot of times people don't think we can do something about it. So they throw up their hands and they're like, I can't do anything about it. So when we raise the money for Drug Free World, um, it goes to support some of these things that are down below, like educators kits. So if you want to get involved and maybe go teach in your school system or teach in your community, um, you know, one of the, some of the powerful things that we saw in that room was when people start talking, they really want to get involved. You know, everybody yeah. knows somebody who's impacted by drugs and we yeah. all can do something today. And I think if we join the conversation together um, and we take some initiative to, you know, take that extra time or make that extra time to, go educate somebody, even hand somebody a booklet, because I was so, you know, ignorant to the fact that a piece of information that gives somebody the truth can wake them up to the idea that maybe they'll never do a drug, or maybe they'll spread that to a friend who, who's in need. So every little action helps, every little, you know, initiative, every little step helps. And, you know, I'm certainly passionate about getting people on the right path so they have a purpose in life of something that they can do to give back. So maybe they don't go down that path of drugs. And uh, I think it's our responsibility to do it as a group. So we're really excited that you were here, Willie. Um, you know, certainly, you know, your, your energy has, extends way beyond the court. Like you're just a delightful person. It's great being here with you. We yeah. really enjoyed it. And Marshall, hats off to you, man, because, you know, not even being personally affected as an individual by it. I know you were affected because of the people around you. But to take on this initiative and to just make this a purpose of yours is like, very, very admirable. So I'm, I'm grateful to be here with you guys. You guys are awesome. And uh, if you guys want some of the educators kits, go down below. If you want some booklets, go down below. And we're going to keep doing this till we get the message out and make a difference. Right on. It matters. Thanks. Great job. Take care, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you.